Hello everyone, welcome to Dimension Quest. I've been spending a bit more time in local virtual machines running under Fusion and have been frustrated by the shared folders feature since it doesn't simply work out of the box with OpenVM tools. When you're using VMware Fusion on Mac OS or VMware Workstation on Windows and Linux, you have the ability to share folders from your host system to the guest virtual machine. It's a simple UI configuration in Fusion and Workstation for the given VM. In order for this to work properly, you must have VMware tools installed, or in the case of Linux, OpenVM tools desktop, which also installs the OpenVM tools base package. Plus a little extra configuration within the guest OS is required for Linux. In this week's video, I'll provide three different solutions to the issue. Number one, add a simple entry to the Etsy FSTAB file. Number two, create a GNOME autostart.desktop file to run the appropriate command upon login. Number three, apply a systemd mount unit file. This is actually the subject of VMware's KB fix. I'll show you what's wrong with that and provide you with a much more usable solution using that same method, but a better configuration file. Let's get started. So first you'll need to go ahead and install your desired Linux guest to do some testing or work. In my case here, I wanted to get a feel for Ubuntu 22.11. I typically use LTS releases for my actual work, but like to take other releases for a spin as well. Once you have it installed, make sure that the tools are installed. In Linux, this is typically going to be the open-vm-tools-desktop package. So with Ubuntu or Debian-based systems, it'll be a simple matter of sudo apt install-y open-vm-tools-desktop. Okay. Assuming you have your guest VM all set and ready, let's go ahead and take a look at our first option. The first option is to simply add a line to your etc fstab file. So make sure you have your sudo privileges ready and do a sudo space vi space forward slash etc forward slash fstab. Once you have the file open, go to the very bottom and add the following dot host colon forward slash space forward slash mnt forward slash hgfs space fuse dot vm hgfs dash fuse space auto comma allow underscore other space zero space zero. Okay, next we need to make sure that we have the hgfs folder created. So do a sudo space mkdir space forward slash mnt forward slash hgfs. Finally, let's make it a little more convenient to access by creating a symbolic link accessible from your home directory. So from your home directory, run the following command ln space dash s space forward slash mnt forward slash hgfs space host dash shared. Now list the directory to confirm the link was created properly. Great, we can see the host shared is linked to slash mnt slash hdfs. Now check the contents of the mnt hdfs folder. Just as expected right now, nothing is there because we haven't actually issued the mount command. If we want to see this right now, we must manually mount. However, since the mapping is defined in our fstab file, the mount will take place upon a reboot, so let's just go ahead and reboot to be sure. Great, let's open our file browser and click into the host shared folder. Looky there, we see the folder I have shared from Fusion. Let's go in there and confirm we have write access by creating a folder. Next, we'll go into that folder and open a terminal window there. Okay, let's create a new file and echo some text into it. Now we can confirm the content of the file is updated. Okay, that's it. At this point, we have working shared folders between the host OS and guest Linux operating system. Let's see another way of doing this now. I've cleaned up this VM so that slash MNT HGFS is no longer mounting via the Etsy FSTAB file. Now I'll paste in the VM HGFS dash fuse command to mount the host shared folders to the host shared folder in my home directory. 
Oops, <laughs> I forgot to make the directory after doing the cleanup earlier. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of right now. Then we'll just hit the up arrow a couple times to rerun the command. And what's this? Okay, so we need to edit the etsyfuse.conf file. Let's go ahead and do that now. So once I go in here, I just uncomment that line for user underscore allow underscore other. I do my colon X to save and exit the file, and then I'll try the command again. And no errors this time. Let's see if it actually worked though, by listing the contents of the host shared folder. Looks good. I see the folder I have shared in Fusion. Okay, let's change into that directory and confirm we have write access. We'll just use touch to create a file and echo a bit of content into it. Great, and let's go ahead and get rid of that little file now. Okay, this is all good, but who wants to run a command every time they log in just to access host shared folders? Not me. So now that we have a working command, we're going to use the GNOME UI to add a new startup application. Let's show our history and copy that command back to our clipboard. There it is. Okay, now click your application launcher or the Windows slash command button on your keyboard to bring up the search window and type start, then click on startup applications. Now click add. For the name, enter something clear like mount host shared folders. In the command box, paste in the command that we copied to the clipboard earlier. Optionally, enter a comment and then click add, then click close. What this process did is it actually created a new .desktop file under the .config slash auto start folder in your home directory. Let's take a look. There we go. We can see our command, the name we gave the command, and our comment. Now I've unmounted the host-shared mount that we manually did earlier so that we can confirm mount upon reboot. Let's go ahead and reboot to check that things are working. Okay, my VM is back up and running, so let's go into our file browser and open the host shared folder. Yep, there's the folder I shared. Looks good. We can see my earlier test folder and file. I can create, rename, edit, and save the file so we are all set here. All right, that's two different methods to auto mount shared folders from VMware Fusion and Workstation to your Linux guest operating system. One more to go. Now, sooner or later, you'll come across VMware's KB article 74650 enabling HGFS shared folders on Fusion or Workstation hosted Linux VMs for OpenVM tools. This article provides the absolute basics to getting shared folders auto-mounting in your Linux guest OS using the systemd mount unit. However, what I found after doing this was the HGFS mount was owned by root, the shared folders under mount HGFS were chmod0700 and owned by user ID 502 and group ID dialout, so my user could not access the folder without sudo or becoming root. And that's even though the allow underscore other option is set in their example file. Now this is not ideal and certainly not user friendly, so I'll provide a much more appropriate solution using a better mount file that mounts the shared folders to your user's home directory for easy access from the terminal as well as your favorite file browser, sets the user and group owner to your user group so that you can actually access the shared folders. Let's first make a note of how the file is named and what that actually translates to. In VMware's KB article, they provide example content with a file name of mnt-hgfs.mount. Now pay close attention. The content of the file name to the left of the dot must match the mount path that you specify on the where line with the forward slash of the path being replaced with a hyphen. Additionally, the file name is case sensitive, so if your shared folder is forward slash home slash biasbill slash capital H host underscore capital S shared, then the file must be named 
home dash B has build dash capital H host underscore capital S shared dot mount. Next, let's take a look at the options line of that example. Options equal default underscore permissions, comma, allow underscore other. This may be fine if you are root, but if you want your user to actually have access to the folders, you should add the UID and GID options with your user ID number and group ID number. For example, options equal default underscore permissions, comma, allow underscore other, comma, UID equals 1000, comma, GID equals 1000. Now be sure to use the proper numbers there. UID and GID 1000 are default for the first user created on most Linux systems. To be sure you're specifying the correct values here, you can run the following commands from your terminal. For the user ID, or UID, type ID space dash U and hit enter. For the GID, type ID space dash G and hit enter. Let's go ahead and follow KB74650. We'll start off by creating the mount file. Next, we paste in the content of the mnt-hgfs.mount file provided in the KB article. We can see here that we need the folder slash mnt slash hgfs. And here we can see the allow other option that is supposed to allow all users access to the mount. Now we need to create or modify the open-vm-tools.conf file and add the word fuse in it. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Finally, we enable and activate the mount service. Okay, let's check the folder and see if we can see the shared content. Oh, yep, yeah, first we need to do that mod probe-v fuse to make sure that that's loaded. Now we can look in the folder and there it is. That is the folder that I have shared in Fusion. We can see the content inside there. Now we'll reboot and make sure that it still auto mounts. Okay, we're back up now. So let's use the file browser to check the folders and files. Okay, it's not in the home directory. So we do have to go browse to the mount slash HGFS. We'll go into my test folder. And let's see, let's see if we can delete this file. No, that didn't appear to work. We'll open it up with the text editor and see if we can edit. All right, I'll try saving this file here. And permission denied. Okay, well, this simply won't do. Let's take a look from the console. We'll open up a terminal window there and check what directory we're in. All right, let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can actually see what's going on here. All right, we can see that things are owned by user ID 502 and group dial out. And our local user is unable to modify any of the files or folders. Yep, see, we cannot remove anything. We weren't able to delete. This, this is uh, not acceptable. All right, enough messing around. Let's go ahead and get this fixed. All right, first off, we're gonna rename or move the mount-hgfs.mount file so that it will mount to home slash biasville slash shared underscore folders. Okay, now let's actually create the folder. Okay, good. Now we need to edit the contents of the mount file. First, let's fix it so that it matches our new desired shared underscore folders location. Now let's add our UID and GID so we actually have permissions to the folders and files. Oops, I did a typo during my config using GUID instead of GID. It's a simple fix, so we'll get back on track now. All right, let's do a daemon reload so that the updated config is read, and we'll try enabling it again. Okay, no errors this time. Note that my user ID and group ID are now the owner. And we'll go into my can I create folder and we'll try removing our test copy. No error there, so let's make sure it's gone, it is. 
Now let's make sure we have right access. Excellent. Okay, that's all looking good. So let's make sure everything's still okay after a reboot. All right, we're back up. So we'll go back into the shared folders directory. Looking good. We see the folder there. Okay, so when I created that shared folders directory, I used an underscore instead of a dash. And the reason that I did that is because the dash is a sort of delimiter when you're doing your file name that you're going to be mapping things to. So if you want to have a dash in the actual folder name, then you're going to need to delimit it. All right, so in order to do that, we're going to need to use a special command. So let's say that I wanted to use shared dash folders instead of shared underscore folders. In that case, I'll need to type the following command, touch space dollar sign parentheses systemd dash escape space dash p space dash dash suffix equals mount space quote slash home slash b as bill slash shared dash folders end quote close parentheses now look at that it encloses the file name in single quotes and changes the dash to a backslash x2d now let's cat the contents of our current config into this new file next we'll update the file so that the where line points to the shared dash folders instead of shared underscore folders in my home directory. Let's make sure to create the folder for the mount and we'll unmount the shared underscore folders and disable the previous config and remove it. Now we need to move the new config file to the forward slash etc slash systemd slash system folder. We can now enable the service and confirm the mount took place. Yep, there's the shared folder. Okay, that wraps up the three methods of getting the VMware shared folders to auto mount on your Linux guest OS under VMware Fusion. The same steps apply if you're running a Linux guest under VMware Workstation 16 for Windows or Linux. I haven't yet tested this under the recently released Workstation Pro 17. Now there is a product support notice regarding the option to map or mount a virtual disk to a drive on the host system, which is no longer available in Workstation Pro 17. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I'll reference it myself when I need to set up another Linux guest. Thanks for watching.